Hey guys, testing, testing, testing. Let's make sure that I am live. If you can, put a zero down to the chat if I'm live. So just like put the frame zero. Boom, boom, boom. Zero, because I gotta make sure that I'm live. Sometimes like there's like a little bit of a delay, so gotta see. So today what we're gonna be talking about is how one of our students in our mentorship program was able to go and add about $5,400 per month from one partnership in less than 21 days. And that's not counting any of the fees that are coming from the cleanups um, that came from this partner. So that's just a monthly. I usually, I usually like to talk in terms of like monthly recurring revenue because that's kind of the stuff that that's real and like long-term tangible. You can get cleanups every once in a while. Like if you get it, don't get me wrong. If you get a cleanup that's like 30,000, 20,000, $40,000, that's meaningful and that's significant. And like for most people that can, that can really be significant in their business. But for most people, if you're like, you know, just getting started and you're not really getting cleanups of that size, it might be an extra like six to seven grand per cleanup. So you might need a little bit more in order to like go. So we focus on monthly recurring revenue because that's the thing that's gonna keep moving. Even if you never get a cleanup again, you're you're going to consistently be able to grow your business now maybe you've seen some of our other videos and you've seen that we have like a mentorship program um that helps people out if you want some help growing your business and like maybe been trying to do some of this stuff on your own and it's just either not working out or maybe you've been thinking about getting started but you just want a proven roadmap to make sure that you know exactly what you need to do in order to go and find success in the shortest path possible either way if you want some help growing your business click the link in the, uh, the description either above or below the video depending on where you're watching it to see if we can help inside our mentorship program now we're in now we have that out of the way let's go and attack this thing so in order to start getting clients that can afford to pay you a higher price point right so in this particular case these are these are like fifty four hundred dollars per month just right off the gate from one partnership in order to be able to do it you have to really be able to charge prices that make a lot of sense for both you your partner and your clients in order to have some margin um for all the parties that are involved now it's really what's in between your ears okay it's all about like your, your mental game your, how you think now one thing i've been running across a lot in the last couple of like days is like a wave of people who it's like they feel like they want to have they want to know every aspect of everything about the business before they either take action go talk to clients launch their business do stuff and that is is literally the opposite of how running a business is generally generally done so they, they ran a study i can't remember exactly um what the name of the study was but a number of years ago and they basically took like who were the top um the top like professions that were starting a business that succeeded in the long run and when we talk about starting it's about, about starting it's not about like who ran it the longest but it's about who started it right it usually comes down to people who are in sales generally have a much higher likelihood of succeeding when they start a business and the reason why is because they have to either learn other skill sets but the main thing they know how to do and the way they think is they're going to go talk to people to see if they can go drum up business versus how a lot of accountants and bookkeepers are we're more focused on like processes procedures and making sure like we know how to do the accounting um the actual accounting and bookkeeping right but when you actually think about business, it's the opposite. Because the first, the first order of business is to get started and then start getting income flowing into the business. Because if there's no income flowing, you're not really a business yet. You're kind of you're still an idea. And it's very easy if you don't have like you know revenue coming into the business. It's very easy for you to either get distracted and go do something else, or maybe one of your family members might talk you out of doing the business. I've I've, I've seen a lot of times where it's like, person like, well, I'm thinking about starting a business. They go talk to their spouse and their spouse is like, oh, you, you're not going to be able to start a business. You're not good enough to do that. You don't have the skill set to do that. Like, that's risky. So it's like the faster you can go get to, like, cash flow positive, the easier it is for you to have long-term longevity inside of your business. Now, one thing that I've noticed when it comes to people where it's like, you know, they they we want to, like, get everything lined up beforehand, it might be that your skill set is more of an operator rather than like someone that's like a starter or a driver i call them driver versus people who steer the the ship so a driver is someone that pushes their foot on the gas and moves forward as fast as possible versus someone that's like more steering they're more controlling the directions of the of the ship most people that are in corporate especially if you're in corporate finance or corporate accounting you're generally steering the ship but we don't really like develop those skill sets inside of our job that cause us to be a driver 
So one thing that you can maybe think about is maybe going and partnering with someone else who already either has business or wants to start a business as well. Now, that's one thing some people think about. I personally don't like that option. I'll tell you why in a couple minutes. But really understand like, like, like who you are being in the moment. Like what is kind of your 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 uh, breakdown and thought process behind actually like running a business? Like, like what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses, right? The better you know what your strengths are and the better you know what your weaknesses are, the easier it is for you to find success in a business. Now, why do I not like partnering? If you're someone who steers the ship, why do I not like partnering with somebody who's a driver? couple of different reasons so if they're internal to your company like they like you guys sign on the dotted line you guys are 50 50 partners or 51 49 whatever the case might be i don't actually like that because in the beginning drivers and steers have two totally different jobs and they're gonna feel like they are clashing constantly and it's it's very 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 difficult to like deal with that if like you're used to doing one thing the other person's doing something i'll give you a story so when I was starting my business and I had a partner, I was so irritated with my partner because she was really good at steering, but she was not very good at driving. And I felt like I was doing all this work to drive. Like I'm, I'm driving to, you know, different cities, walking into the business owner's um, office with like a stack of flyers. I'm doing the cold call. I'm going to networking events. I am uh, making blog posts on LinkedIn. I'm trying to upwork. I'm doing all this stuff. But since that was not really her skill set, I would look at her all day and I'm like, well, what are you doing? Why am I putting in all this effort? And, and why aren't you putting in all this effort? And it kind of led to like a little bit of like internal resentment. Now, you know, for a lot of people, that internal resentment can cause your business to fail before you even get started. So now you guys, rather than working together to go and attack, you guys are basically um, kind of fighting amongst each other, which caused you not to be able to go and like, grow as fast as possible, right? So now you end up stalling out, you end up getting arguments, you end up just really not really making this stuff work. And it's very hard for most people to kind of come back for that. So it, let's say you're someone that, drive, that likes to steer, right? So maybe you're not someone that wants to do a million hours of marketing, a million hours of sales. You want to focus on doing the accounting, doing the bookkeeping. How can you still get clients? How can you still grow your business? The answer is partnership, but you want to do it with an external company. So you want to find someone that already likes marketing, already likes sales, and slash or already has a business established that's slightly different than yours. So we teach our students to actually partner with different types of either professional services or just different business owners that might have influence over your potential clients. So in this particular case, our student actually partnered with an insurance agent, like a life insurance agent. He deals with generally people that have a business and like maybe it's a high earning business, but they want to start really like protecting themselves in case they die and like really doing some more of those like long term planning type services. So basically what he did was he like connected her to all the people that needed bookkeeping inside of his organization. Now, he wasn't able to do it to all the people because like 50 percent of them already might have had a bookkeeper in place. But the thing about switching some things over, but the other 50 percent were like, OK, cool, ready to get started right now. And that led to about fifty four thousand dollars per month. And actually, it, even to even take a step back, if you count like the initial like cleanup. So she's going to get about twelve thousand eight hundred dollars in the first month just from like cleaning up like half of those companies before the $5,400 even kicks in, right? So on top of getting that like consistent like monthly amount, and that's like a breakdown of like all the clients together, what they all like totaled up to, right? I think it was, I think it was like five clients. So it wasn't like this, it wasn't like 20, 30 clients that she was, was referred. It was some really high, like I, I right around like a thousand about twelve hundred dollars per month per client which in my opinion when you're just getting started like she only started her business i like to say about 25 days ago so like five clients in 21 days to get to fifty four hundred dollars per month knowing the stuff that we kind of teach inside the program in my opinion that's very very um good and it was good that she didn't get like 10 20 or 30 clients in her first couple months like that would have been really hard to do but it's only five clients and they're generally pretty pretty easy to get started it's not that much difficulty to do so she's predicting it's going to be about two months worth of cleanup um um in terms of cleanup so about twelve thousand eight hundred for the first month times two so she thinks she's gonna get about twenty five thousand six hundred dollars from just the cleanups alone and then what she thinks she's going to do based on the contracted revenue is about $5,400 per month. So we'll do $5,400 per month times about 12. 
that's about 64,000 plus about 25,600. So she should get about $90,000 from this one partnership if she, nothing else changes. So that means like if she doesn't get any more part, any more clients from this one partner, if she doesn't get anything else outside of just maintaining those monthly clients, she would make about $90,000 from this one partnership. Now, the reason why it's important is because the person she partnered with is someone that is a driver. This person loves sales, loves marketing, loves talking to people versus my student in our program really just wanted to focus on the books. So she didn't really want to have to go and learn how to do like a bunch of fancy marketing and do a million consultation calls. It was very, very simple the way that she got it. And when you have partners, in a lot of cases, you don't even necessarily need to do the consultation call yourself. So she didn't even have to do a consultation call. Literally, you just say, hey, this person does bookkeeping. They're able to do it all via like email and like messenger to kind of talk about like, okay, so this is like the scope of work. Gave her access to the books. She used our pricing. Like we give you guys like a pricing calculator when you join our program. Um, use the pricing calculator to go and like determine how much you should charge for each client. Send them each like invoices via email. They said yes, because the person already basically made them sign up with them. <laughs> and then she was able to get started. So what she basically did is when she came in the program, we give you guys like seven different ways you can market when you first join the program. Now, when when you're inside, I tell you which of the seven to do because I don't want you like just doing like seven different marketing methods while you're inside the program for the rest of your life. Really what our what my hope and my goals for every single person in the mentorship program is they have like one to maybe maximum three different ways they go and get clients. Really ideally about one that's very diversified. So in her particular case, the first thing we did was, you know, we talk about how to go get referral partners. So basically it took about two days to kind of implement the template that we give you guys. We give you, we give some of our students like a list of leads they can use to go and like actually go and get partnership very quickly. She did that partnership. It took her about three days for the person to respond back to her on a call. They basically just like just chopped it up and thought about like what are the different ways they can kind of help each other out. Then they actually met, um, I believe, believe they met in person because the person like really close to her and he basically coordinated every single client like which one would be likely to work with her which one would be like kind of standoffish depending on like the personality and the pricing right and then they moved over so literally it took about in grand total of things it took about 14 days in total for like the full deal to be like consolidated right so it doesn't have to take you a long time to grow your business if you do the right things if you know how to be very strategic with your business and like partner with the right people and then just like really, 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 really focusing on your strengths, right? So if she had been kind of like, you know how some people are where it's like, oh, I want to go and do a million hours of marketing. Oh, I'm going to have to learn all this stuff. Oh, I'm going to, it's like that probably would not have worked for her. That would work for someone like myself because that's what I kind of like doing. I, I really like the understanding like marketing and psychology and sales, right? That's one thing I always used to love reading like psychology books to understand like how people thought, why people did the way did the things that they did why people acted the way they acted because that was just what i was focused on what i just like really really enjoyed but if you don't really enjoy that kind of stuff you don't really enjoy interpersonal communications or dealings you might want to focus and partner with people that have and then all you need to do so let's say you don't get your first partnership that gives you fifty four hundred dollars a month in your first partnership let's say it takes you like maybe three or four or let's even say even better more stable version of this is let's say that you go and get four partners that each send you one to four consultation calls that is anywhere between four to 16 potential people to get on the call with you when you implement these kind of leads these people already want to work with you so you just have to make sure your sales script is very good and it really breaks down why someone should work with you at the price point you're asking like we give you like sales scripts so you know exactly what to say and how to really set proper expectations so they don't get like super surprised when you charge them an above average amount of money Right, because sometimes what happens, like with referrals, they might be doing the referral partner a favor. They come to you, and then like if you hit them with like a price that's like four times what they're expecting, they can kind of balk. But instead, if when you're doing a presentation on on how you're gonna help them, you're kind of seeding their mind about like what price is reasonable. When I say seeding, it's more like preparing them. So kind of like, okay, so this is reasonable. This is kind of what most of your charge. This is how most people think about charging. This is why we're charging like this. This is what the price is. By the time you drop that price, they're like, okay, that makes sense. We've been talking about it. They're very relaxed. They're very calm. And since they already want to work with you, they already emotionally want to work with you because it came from referral. They logically see why they should pay the amount of money, and it just makes sense. They move forward very quickly. So from doing that, you can get in between like four to sixteen clients off of the four to sixteen sales consultation calls. So it's like you don't need a lot of these partners in order to go and like grow your business. You just need to make sure you're talking to the right ones and you understand how to actually go and approach them, how to talk to them. 
inside of our program, like we will teach you how to actually go and like understand like who is the person to go look into, right? Because I'm always thinking about like who am I going to be talking to? I like to go and talk to um, professional services that look like they have um, that look like they have my ideal audience already inside of like their their other business, their clientele, their friends list. And I'm reading their profiles very, very systematically to know like, okay, is this person gonna be working with someone that's, you know, sophisticated or is this person working with like a beginner business owner? Like, let's say for example, you're gonna go to um, someone that's maybe like a business consultant. I do not wanna talk to a business consultant that helps people start their business, right? Because in a lot of cases, I want to go after more a little bit businesses that are doing between like five hundred thousand to about three million dollars per year. That's kind of the sweet spot I found to charge five hundred to five thousand dollars per month per client. Okay, cool. So I'm looking for and let's say it's a business consultant. I'm looking for business consultants that in their profile they're talking about clients that fall inside those categories. Now another thing to understand is like what are the problems of someone that is, is between five hundred to $3 million per year, right? Because the, the way the person's profile is written is going to speak to those type of companies. So if you don't know what the problems are of your ideal audience, it does make it a little bit harder to kind of interpret what the other person's profile is saying and who it's going to attract. So for me, for example, if I'm, if I'm let's say I'm gonna go after like um, a business consultant that deals like real estate investing, I do not want to talk to the person who talks about how to, how to start investing with real estate with zero money down. That probably means a person doesn't really have a huge amount of money in a lot of cases, and they're just getting started. They're probably not making $500,000 per year in their real estate business. Okay. Versus you're talking to someone that's doing more of like, he teaches people how to, how to really go and like roll up your existing investments into a 1031 exchange. So you can start going to apartment buildings and how to get creative financing for your apartment buildings. Okay. That's an entirely different person. Apartment buildings, like you need capital to do it, or you need to be able to go in and like have um, some significant ask, um, significant access to credit. Or you'd have someone that's partnered with you that has the experience to be able to go and get that and leverage that, right? So that's not a beginner. So what that lets me know also is do if they were like for this example, they already have like properties they're trying to look to go and like sell and get into the 1031 exchange, they might have multiple properties. So I can kind of excuse me get an estimation of what their clientele is going to look like so I can make those judgments on is this person worth having the conversation to be a referral partner and then you just keep multiplying that out and multiplying that out and multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and over time you look up and you've had 20 people that have each sent you one consultation call this year and now it's like there's no re there's no surprise why you have clients there's no surprise why you're making a lot of money Right? It's just right now, maybe you're just trying to do the wrong things or you just don't really have a good strategy to get proper leads and get channels to these partners who can then send the work to you. Because right? if you approach the partners incorrectly, they're not going to want to talk to you because they just, you know, they might feel that you're just trying to use them. Right? So if you understand how to approach them correctly and understand how to get them to really buy into you and buy into wanting to support you, it makes the relationship so much better and lasts a lot longer. Okay? So... If you want some help doing any of the stuff we've been talking about today, so a couple different options for you. Number one, I would recommend that you go ahead and click the link inside the description, book a call with us to see if we can help you inside of our training program. Now, the reason why it's like one of the most impactful things for you is because think about it. This person grew their business by $90,000 per year in 21 days. Many people that are gonna be watching this video have maybe been watching me on YouTube for more than 20 days. So the time that you've been watching videos and sitting back, this person took action, attacked, and essentially changed their life. You could do the same thing. Now it's not guaranteed because I don't know you watch this, like you might you might not be a good fit for our program. So I'm not promising you just because you're watching this video that you're gonna make a million dollars, right? But the first step to going and making change in your life and really growing is taking action. The next action in front of you is to either go and try and do the stuff on your own or to partner with someone. Now you can try and do stuff on your own. It's just, again, it's like there's an opportunity cost to doing something, either doing it wrong or doing it in a way to where it's not that effective, right? Because let's say that you do get some some traction. So I, I once, uh, a lot of people come to me and like maybe they have a, a bookkeeping or accounting business. And they have like 10, 15, 20 clients and that they're not making more than five grand a month. 
So they're kind of capped. So the first thing we have to do is we have to restructure the way they're pricing, go to all their clients and like raise their prices, right? And in a lot of cases, they're capped off in the beginning before they start working with me. So it's like, you're going to end up working together. It's easier if you just do things right the first time, because then you set your business up for success long-term and you're able to really make as much money as possible versus like getting kind of capped off with like under $5,000 a month. You're still working your job and it's just no fun, right? So get stuff done from the start, like do it correctly, do it. Just get, get a blueprint, get something moving. Even if it's not our program, do something to kind of move your business forward so that you're able to be in a different spot 30 days from now, 60 days from now, 90 days from now, two years from now. I don't want to see you in the same spot two years from now. You have too much potential. You have too much um, You have too much at stake, right? Right. Your life is very important. So if you want some help growing your business, click the link inside the description. Um, we'll see you on the call. We'll see if we can help you out. If we can't, do like that's okay. I'm going to tell you. I'll be the first person to tell you that we can't help you, right? And it's not like in a mean way. It's just I only want to work with people who – have the who can fit our model who we feel can take what we teach them and implement as as quickly and swiftly as possible so we get a very tangible reward so that the person can really start building the building blocks of their business i want to make sure it's success i don't just want to bring on people where it's like i can't help them out I'm just, it's just like a money grab i don't want to money grab people you know what i mean it just doesn't make sense and i'm trying to do this for the next like five to ten years right if i'm just money grabbing everybody and just accepting every single person that comes to me it doesn't make sense because you, you're you're just going to get like a bunch of like um bad reviews and stuff like that so i want to keep my review rate high i want to keep our success rate very high so i only want to work with people who i can help out so if you want to see if we can help you if you want to see if it's a good fit Click the link. I'll see you on the other side. Talk to you soon. Take it easy.